The sole slogan for the season is, we got this. <laughs> oh yeah, they had it all the way. The opener came down to the final play before the Soul walked away winners 63-62. Stand by to walk the plank. Walk the Plank, the Soul Coaches Show, is brought to you by Foods Galore, preferred food supplier for Chickie and Pete's restaurants. Bradford White Water Heater, the official water heater of the Philadelphia Soul. Gino Steaks, the best cheese steak in Philadelphia since 1966. Susquehanna Bank, the preferred banking partner of the Philadelphia Soul. And Hillis Adjustments, there are times in life when disaster may strike your home or business. Hillis is there for you. The season is underway. Welcome to Walk the Plank with Soul Head Coach Doug Plank. I'm Lou Tilly, and boy, Doug, if this is the way this year is going to be, it, it's going to be a little hard on your hair and on your nerves, my friend. But 63-62, it's I guess it's what arena ball is all about down in New Orleans yesterday. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, let's face it, we are in the entertainment business. Yeah. So I'm not saying that's why we played the way we did. We try to make it exciting that no one would ever leave the television set until the game was over. But I have to give... New Orleans some credit. Uh, they are much improved from where they were last year. And, and on the other hand, uh, there's still some things that we need to do to get ready for next week. You saw the opener uh, on Comcast Sportsnet. Uh, you're watching this show on Comcast Sportsnet and on the Comcast Network. Uh, and you're going to see the games all through the year. And, and really, uh, it was a great example of what the game can be. First of all, 63-62 says it all. But the final minute is worth a, a segment of its own. But let's go chronologically. You start off well. You get a stop right out of the box from your revamped defense. And so you feel pretty good. You get a two-touchdown spread on them right out of the box in the first quarter. There's no question. Offenses take a while generally to start clicking. And that was the case with New Orleans. They came out. They were not hitting their receivers very accurately. We, we were mixing up some of our defenses early on. I think we were catching them off guard. And obviously it worked out as far as getting a stop. And stops are so important in this game. And especially early in the game, we felt like we had the momentum in the first quarter. And Dan uh, Rattleball, your new quarterback and your new wide receiver, Tiger Jones, shows his value right away, scores the first touchdown of the game and of the year. He'd have three on the night and 10 catches for 130. What was obvious to me is he runs very disciplined, tight routes, and his quarterback knows where he's going to find him. And he's a good dancer, too. After all oh, yeah, he's not so tight once he scores. He's, I, I had Tiger as a player yeah. when I was coaching in Georgia. And I always respected him because his, his effort and his concentration doesn't make mental mistakes, uh, holds on to the football, and, you know, he had a fantastic game, and I'm really looking for great things from him this season. You know, we spotlit uh, some of the kids that you brought over from Dallas in the old offseason, and we called it sold on Philly. <laughs> and almost all of them had a huge impact. But uh, it was hard to pick a, a star of the game. And it looked like the game was getting away from you until one of your newcomers, Jeff Hewley, makes his impact for the first time with the long touchdown. And that really turned the game uh, back your way. But then your defense in the second half kind of loses contact, Doug. Gives up 42 points in the second half. Yeah, it's 42 points is way too much to give up, even in Arena Football League. And it was really just breakdowns in communication from one player to another. And in the secondary, I tell the players all the time, if you're confused, get deep. Don't go near the line of scrimmage. There are no answers at the line of scrimmage. And unfortunately, we did that several times. But these are all correctable mistakes. So I'm not going to try to window dress it and make it not sound like it's important. It's very important. And I promise you that we are going to put a lot of attention and time, and we'll make sure that we get it right for this week. You know, the, as you mentioned, your young secondary starts off well. You get a defensive stop. You get the two-score spread. Mm -hmm. But something happened then, and Rocco started to find a rhythm and started to find wide-open receivers for deep strikes against you that I know you were concerned about. And, and there's no question. We, we really handled the short passing game well. What happened was they started getting into a rhythm where they were sending fast, uh, very agile receivers down the middle of the field, and they were having two-way goes on our middle safety. Either, they could either go to the post or the corner. Very difficult thing to do, being a defensive back in any league, but being all by yourself in front of the entire crowd and being able to cover a wide receiver both at a post and the corner. 
Now, number 21 is your blow-up guy linebacker, Dusty Bear, who was on the show with us yes. last week, and you said he's going to make an impact one way or the other, and he did. He got called for a couple of personal fouls, one of which you thought maybe mm -hmm. was questionable, and you thought maybe he got labeled. Now, here's the important stat in this game, and the reason it was close. Personal fouls, or rather penalties, 12 against the soul, 2 against the voodoo. That's a little unequal. I don't want to complain about the officiating, right. but... Well, you know what? There's, there's no doubt that if you're going to be a good football team, you've you got to minimize your penalties. And I never want to try to take away our aggression, but 12 penalties. But as I mentioned to you, when you start having penalties, you're jumping off sides, you're getting personal fouls, you can't help but the officials are always going to now put a scrutiny on you that they wouldn't ordinarily do. And I think every time that they were looking for us to have an opportunity to get a penalty, they called it. And I'm not saying there was, they were unfair or anything like that. You set the tone by how you play and make sure that you follow the rules. Uh, one sequence near the end of the first half, it looks like Donovan Morgan has run the ball into the end zone for a touchdown. At first they signal that, but then they decide to mark it at the one foot line. And on the next play, Morgan, on a play that Ross scores on, is called for a hold. They move the ball back 10 yards. Mm -hmm. And on the next play, Donovan fumbles the ball. Could have been a huge turning point affected by a penalty. There is no question in football, uh, once you've missed an opportunity to either, either get an interception, turn the ball over, score a touchdown, if that goes against you, then... I almost cringe because usually the next play or the next play after that, something bad happens. And that was exactly what happened to us. Uh, we, we really possibly could have challenged that call, but we felt like it was just best to go with it and, and we were going to score anyway. Yeah, and you scored with 17 seconds left, this little flip to Morgan. But, you know, if you watch Arena Ball, yes. we were all concerned that maybe you scored too fast. And sure enough, they line up for a 40-yard field goal. And they only needed you know, one point to tie us and two to win the game. Of course, a field goal would have won the game for them. So we were in a situation that do you hold the ball too long? Do you, do you take the risk of not getting in, in the end zone? And that was the dilemma we had late in the game. So I think we made the right decision by scoring. You know, sometimes it's easy to look back at it as an afterthought and say, well, you shouldn't have done that. But it turned out well for us. And Brian Robinson comes crashing through to thump it and end all the excitement on the last play of the game, Sol 63 to 62. When we come back, we're going to talk with Jeff Hewley, who was just fantastic. And you'll also hear from Clint Dozell, who runs the offense for Doug Plank. First, I want to tell you about April 1st when the Soul comes back to the Wells Fargo Center. That's the opener brought to you by Lundy Law. Be sure to see there uh, and inquire about the all you can eat at Chickies and Pete's package. Bring a teddy bear to the game and get the chance to meet Dusty Bear. For more information, call 888-789-SOUL or go to PhiladelphiaSoul.com. When we come back, the star of the game, he swept all the honors, Jeff Hewley. Hey, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Soul are inviting you to call now and purchase a Doug Plank 46-pack. What is it? Tickets to four games, including the home opener on April 1st. Go to phillywegotthis.com. That's four games, plus all the benefits of being part of a championship team and championship season for 46 bucks. You want in? Go to phillywegotthis.com or call the Soul office at 888-789-SOUL. Go to phillywegotthis.com. If you've been seriously injured in an auto accident, remember this name. If you're being pressured by the insurance company to take a settlement that isn't fair, remember this name. If you need someone to fight for you to get the money you deserve, remember this name. Lundy Law. Call 1-800-LUNDY-LAW. Winning millions for clients in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware for over 50 years. You have 25 hours of things to do every day and just 24 hours to do them. Finding time to manage your money can be a chore. Susquehanna Bank offers a variety of checking options to help. Whether you're on the road, at home, or anywhere in between. And even though convenience is its own reward, it's just one of the many we offer. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for busy people like you. Member FDIC. So, Mr. Jaworski, we wanted to show you the new packaging for Goldenberg's Peanut Chews. Of course, it still has the same original chewy, chocolatey, peanutty taste. Would you like to try one? Sure. So? Man, these are really good. Mm-hmm. What? Now that's chewing it old school. 
fly off the net. Hughley has it. He breaks it this time. Jeff Hughley, one man to beat. It's the Walk the Plank with Coach Doug Plank of the Philadelphia Soul. Week one in the book, 17 to go. The Soul 1-0 and after a 63-62 thriller that went down to the very last play in New Orleans uh, with Doug Plank, the coach. And our first star of the game, I guess, this year, Jeff Hewley. And, Jeff, you pulled off something that we think is a first in the AFL. They award the offensive player of the game, the MVP, the Iron Man, who plays right. all around, and the playmaker mm -hmm. of the day. You won all four awards, we think, for the first time <laughs> in AFL history. Pretty good debut for you with the soul last night. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, just taking advantage of, you know, the help of my teammates uh, and just taking advantage of the plays that was called and present myself at the right time and just uh, hustling to put points on the board for our team. Well, we saw your kick return for the touchdown, mm -hmm. and just now we saw your little, uh, it was almost a drag pattern, Doug. You, yes. You're using him almost like as the underneath guy for the check down, but it paid big dividends. Well, you know, when you have a player of his skills and abilities, you try to give him the ball in the open field where it's just like a return, a kickoff return, he, he realizes where everyone's at and where the natural lanes are. And so that would make, that, that's what makes it so valuable. We don't have to send him deep. We can send him on a rather short route. He can find his way through the rest of the defenders. Yeah, you must love that because you, you got that ball out in the flat and your eyes, I could see him, got about this big, right? Yeah, most definitely. And especially um, when you get the ball in your hands real quickly, you have a chance to make a big play wherever you're at on the field. So, you know, it's just our job as receivers to take advantage of that and make the most of it. You know, I was saying to Doug, for your first game ever together with Donovan Morgan and uh, with Tiger Jones, and all of you coming from three different spots a year ago, it looked like you had played a whole year together. Well, yeah, well, me and Donovan, we played in uh, Tulsa in 2010, I so we that. had history. Uh, we also played uh, in AFL 2 2007 uh, with the Tulsa Talons. So we, we're real familiar and complement each other very well. You know, and Tiger this year, we connected very well during camp. You know, we, we was on beat uh, really quickly, yeah. and it was real surprising. So Speaking of beat, the three of you guys scored nine touchdowns in total yesterday, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. must be exhausted from all the Touchdown. dancing you did in the end zone. No, <laughs> no, it's going to be dancing every night, yeah? every night, every football night. Do you have something left for Bourbon Street oh, last yeah. night? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah? You know, we got it in. Uh, me and the fellas had a great time. Yeah, you sure did. Yeah. And you don't mind that, right? A little no, team bonding? No, no, I'm all for celebration. I, I think that should be encouraged more in football. I know now in college and in the NFL, you get penalties and uh, – maybe even suspensions for going down there and making too much of it. Hey, you work so hard to get to the end zone. I'm going to be the first there, first one there leading the players. As part, as well, that I got to see. There. That I got to see. Uh, Jeff Hewley, 360 total yards yesterday, a sole record, 260 of them in kick returns on 10 kick returns, but 240 of them on kick returns, 10 of them. But if you take away the two touchbacks, you had eight returns for 245 yards, which comes out to almost 30-some yards per return. Is that your best night ever? I think so, you know, but the thing about it is um, we got the victory. That's yeah. the most important of, of, of any stat. You know, you can get as many yards as you mm -hmm. want, but if you're not scoring any touchdowns with it, it's pointless. Yeah. So, you know, we, we turned those returns into points, and that's what helped us Any out. doubt in your mind when you get the ball back with a minute to go that you're going to win this thing down oh, yeah, six points at the time? they scored too quickly. With three minutes left, our offense is too, too good. You know, I just have that confidence in us. And as, as a team, I know when we go down to score, I know the defense is going to stop, and we're yep. going to come out victorious. And Jeff had a huge run around left end with about 25 seconds left. They got three yards, got you the first down, but you sat down instead of going into that end zone. Yeah. You wanted to go in, I, I wanted to. I wanted to. And the defense talked trash after they hit me. <laughs> I was like, oh, let me get another call. But, you know, it's, it's more to it than, than my pride. You know, it's, it's about the victory mm -hmm. for the team. Jeff, welcome to Philadelphia, out of Jacksonville, Florida. Yes, sir. Big smile on your face. Let's hope we see that all the 18 regular season games. And right. then three more times three. when we go back to New Orleans for yes, the Reno Bowl. When we go back, Clint Dozell, who coached that <laughs> offense, you'll get his read on that exciting final minute drive to victory. When we come right back with Doug, walk the plank right here. Hey, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Soul are inviting you to call now and purchase a Doug Plank 46 pack. What is it? Tickets to four games, including the home opener on April 1st. Go to phillywegotthis.com. That's four games, plus all the benefits of being part of a championship team and championship season for 46 bucks. You want in? Go to phillywegotthis.com or call the Soul office at 888-789-SOUL. Go to phillywegotthis.com. 
I do a lot of weird stuff to save money. Carpooling. We clip coupons. 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 You gotta eat leftovers, man. You got to. Susquehanna Bank knows you're always looking for ways to save money. Well, I eat in a lot more than I used to. I use this to get places. I buy generic everything. We use those swirly light bulbs. You work hard for your money, and Susquehanna can help you keep more of it with free checking. Open your account today. Susquehanna Bank. Doing what counts. Member FDIC. If you've been seriously injured in an auto accident, remember this name. If you're being pressured by the insurance company to take a settlement that isn't fair, remember this name. If you need someone to fight for you to get the money you deserve, remember this name. Lundy Law. Call 1-800-LUNDY-LAW. Winning millions for clients in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware for over 50 years. Hi, this is Pete from Chickie and Pete's. Chickie and Pete's has been recognized as the best sports bar in North America. We couldn't have done it without you, our loyal fans. You know, the Philadelphia sports fan wears their heart on their sleeve and has the enthusiasm like no other city in America. So at this time, we'd like to thank you for supporting your teams and supporting us at Chickie and Pete's, making us number one. Come down to Chickie and Pete's at Packer Avenue and see the trophy for being the number one sports bar in North America. We'll see you here at Chickie and Pete's. Once. Right of all. Over the middle. Touchdown, Donovan Morgan. And that was with 17 seconds left in regulation to tie the game. The extra point was good. You know, in a traditional world, you think you got this game, but not in the AFL. Back with Doug Plank and now Coach Clint Dozell, the offensive coordinator now, who was calling that final drive. He got the ball back with about 41 yards to go with a minute left in the game. In my world, I, I, you know, I, I want you to get the ball in the end zone. You're down six. <laughs> but in your world, you got to bleed every second out of that drive, didn't you? We do. We do. I actually got it back with about three-something left, and, which is usually enough time for them to get the ball back. But uh, some ha things happened that didn't look good for us. But once we got the fourth down conversion, it was in our hands then. Uh, we still had about 25, 30 yards to go, but it was still in our hands. Let's talk about that. Because now you're trying to kill the clock in that final minute. And, you, and Tom Goodhines, our color commentator, just set it up and he said, we want to run the ball here, but the one thing we don't want to do is go out of bounds. We want to force them to use a timeout there. So you flip it on the right side to Donovan Morgan, and he goes out of bounds, yeah. and the camera catches you. Wow, you look happy. Yeah, we discussed that when we broke the huddle several times. Make sure we're going to run this play, stay in bounds, get that clock to run, and make them use their final timeout. Uh, he didn't. He didn't do that. I was a little frustrated. Which those are important parts of the game. You know, you've got to do the little things to, to, to did get. You talk wins. to him about it today at the uh, at the at the at the film meeting. Did you? Oh, yeah. of course we did. Yeah. You know, we actually watched the film today as a, the entire team, and it gives you appreciation for what the other side has to do. But it also you start to realize some of the uh, inconsistencies on the offense and defense when you look at it from both sides. So I think it's good every now and then just to give all the players on the team an opportunity to watch what everybody does in the game. It sees both sides. Sees then you come back sides. with that same play, by the way. you got to get the first down, and you throw it left side. But Hewley gets the first down, and he sits down. He doesn't go into the end zone. That was brilliant. Best three yards of the day, right? It was. It was. It was a, a great play by him. Diamond actually got hurt on the wall, um, and he actually had to go out of the game because we didn't want to waste our final timeout. And uh, Jeff ended up going to his spot, which he's never done that play before. You're kidding. Did it to perfection. Wow. Perfection. How about that? Didn't realize that. And then with 17 seconds left, we're thinking maybe you're going to throw it into the stands, kill some time. Instead, you flipped it to Donovan for the go-ahead touchdown. Turned out to be the winner. That was a mistake. Mistake? That was a mistake. Uh, we, we should have nailed the ball right there, which being behind, we can do that in arena football. Run the clock down to about 10, 12 seconds, call a timeout, and then have two chances to score from there, which we got a pretty good red zone package. We were going to run the same play and scored. And now they do get the ball back. Right. And you, we're all holding our breath. And they throw the ball in. <laughs> Come the on, end Lou. Zone. You gotta oh, trust man. him. I was ready to throw my headsets down. And the kid drops the ball. Well, he slams into the wall. Whatever happened. Did you think you were a, 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 a loser at that point? No, I think he was so far wide open that he panicked. Really? He saw nobody around him. <laughs> you know, as a kid, it's the hardest ball to catch. It's the hardest ball to catch. And he didn't catch it. And I, I, I felt like after that play, I knew they were going to either have to kick or a desperation throw from midfield. I, you know, I was feeling pretty good about it. Yep. And for those of you that don't know, Clint was the head coach down at Dallas last year, engineered a, a huge turnaround to, mm -hmm. to go with 11-7 and seven last year, and then brought with you 
First you brought him in as your offensive coordinator and you brought all these great players with you. Clinton was also one of the great quarterbacks in the history of the AFL, especially down in Dallas. And I know you're just 41 years old. You, you ever feel like maybe you could still go out there in a pinch? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I think I could play this game for a long time, but uh, my wife said it's time to coach. So ah. the, the ball spoke, <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. The bottom line. <laughs> and what about your young quarterback? Uh, the second year you worked with Dan down last year in Dallas, and I thought he was pretty darn near flawless yesterday. He had a good, good ball game. Um, some mistakes early on, uh, nervous ones just like their quarterback, settled down and played a beautiful game. Yeah. Yeah, um, and the three receivers, I thought you guys both had to be pleased, unless you saw something in the film I didn't see today. Pretty tight game. No, yeah, I was telling Clint, I said if there was only, if there was ever a problem with those three receivers, it was they were scored too fast. <laughs> on defense, you know, we were out there going through a drive or whatever, and then all of a sudden you go over and sit down for one or two plays, and it, it, all of a sudden you're back out on the field. So, but I'll, I'll take that complaint all the time. Yeah. Uh, Next week, do you just go with what's working? I mean, in the arena league, you don't really vary it that much, do you? No, there's not. You, you, you go based on uh, what talent you have, uh, you're playing against. Uh, we don't know a lot about Pittsburgh against almost another bye week for us. The first game they played, mm -hmm. they didn't have a lot of their good players yeah. playing. Yeah. So uh, it's almost another bye week for us. We'll run our plays. It doesn't matter really what they do. It's as long as we're making the right reads, putting the balls in the hands based on manner zone, we'll be just fine. Where are you from originally, Clint? <laughs> Texas. Man, there's a whole lot of southern accents here <laughs> in Chicken and Pete's in South Philly. It's South Philly, not the South. <laughs> but if you come to see the soul, you see Clint's offense and Doug's offense, you're going to hear a lot of that. Uh, we're still around. Home opener coming up on April 1st at the Wells Fargo Center. Come out and, and, and audition for the new show, Dancing on Air. You'll have the opportunity to do it. Uh, contact the soul at 888-789-SOUL for more information. And we'll be right back to set up next week's game as the soul go on the road to take on the Pittsburgh Power. If you've been seriously injured in an auto accident, remember this name. If you're being pressured by the insurance company to take a settlement that isn't fair, remember this name. If you need someone to fight for you to get the money you deserve, remember this name. Lundy Law. Call 1-800-LUNDY-LAW. Winning millions for clients in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware for over 50 years. Hey, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Soul are inviting you to call now and purchase a Doug Plank 46-pack. What is it? Tickets to four games, including the home opener on April 1st. Go to phillywegotthis.com. That's four games, plus all the benefits of being part of a championship team and championship season for 46 bucks. You want in? Go to phillywegotthis.com or call the Soul office at 888-789-SOUL. Go to phillywegotthis.com. So, Mr. Jaworski, we wanted to show you the new packaging for Goldenberg's Peanut Chews. Of course, it still has the same original chewy, chocolatey, peanutty taste. Would you like to try one? Sure. So? Man, these are really good. Mm hmm What? Now that's chewing it old school. You have 25 hours of things to do every day and just 24 hours to do them. Finding time to manage your money can be a chore. Susquehanna Bank offers a variety of checking options to help. Whether you're on the road, at home, or anywhere in between. And even though convenience is its own reward, it's just one of the many we offer. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for busy people like you. Member FDIC. So Lundy Law injury report looks like this out for the Pittsburgh game. Devin Clark again, Jerome Hayes again, Alfonso Hoggard again, and Brandon Perkins who came up lame in the New Orleans game with a hamstring. The injury report presented by 1-800 Lundy Law Injury and Disability Lawyers serving Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Remember the name, Lundy Law, the official law firm of the Philadelphia Soul. Lou Tilly back with Doug Plank here as we get ready to go to Pittsburgh now. This game will be on the NFL Network. Yes. Sadly, I don't get to call this one. 
But uh, Pittsburgh with some question marks. Uh, they had a bye week. It's going to be a new experience. You mm -hmm. kind of have to feel your way through this game in the early moments, right? There's, there's no doubt. We don't really know a lot about them uh, because we don't have a lot of uh, game tape to watch. On, on the other hand, they really don't know a lot about us other than just this one game. But it's close by. It's gonna, that's going to be a huge advantage for us where we're not trying to travel halfway across the country. And the players are looking to improve from week one. And here's the important thing. You're on national TV. You're on the yes. NFL Network. You want to show off. It and you want the folks back here yes. to see you coming home at 2-0 and for the April 1st home opener here at the Wells Fargo Center against Cleveland. Yeah, there's no question that uh, being undefeated coming into our first home game would be a big plus. But we don't try to overlook anyone. Uh, this Pittsburgh game is going to be very tough. They're always very physical as far as their players are concerned. So it's going to be a challenge. And, and, and as we just discussed, Doug, it's pretty basic what you really do inside the Arena Football League, except make some adjustments. There are mm -hmm. only so many patterns. There's a basic yes. offense you put in. Yeah, the, we, we, um, I mean, really, we're trying to attract players like Jeff that have the incredible ability to elude, you know, elude uh, defenders and, and get into the open territory and use the natural skills and abilities that they have. So, yes, it's very contained. So the Soul coming off an opening game win in New Orleans. You saw it uh, right here on Comcast 63-62 on the last play of the game and the season they hope will end in New Orleans. That's where the Arena Bowl is, the championship game. So we hope to go back there with you if you'd like to go. A special uh, offer being coming to you, a contest from the Philadelphia Soul. Uh, go to the Soul Facebook page and click like to be eligible. Just that easy for a trip for two free round trip tickets to New Orleans for four days and three nights. I don't know if I can handle three nights down New Orleans for Arena Bowl 25. Facebook.com forward slash Soul. And of course the home opener coming up presented by Lundy Law on April 1st at the Wells Fargo Center. It's a six o'clock kickoff. All kinds of great things. Come down and try out for Dancing on Air. And of course the coaches show. Our show here on TV but you have your own radio show Doug in Contra Hawk and every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Yeah, Wednesday we invite all the fans to go out. It's, it's, a, it's a great restaurant, great environment, and you, we're going to keep mixing up the, the players each, each week, so it's going to be a great opportunity to meet our team. It's at Tateros, and you can hear it on ESPN 950 every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Thanks, Doug. Congratulations Thank on you. that opening game Appreciate win. Because you know what? We got this. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Good night, everybody. Walk the Plank, the sole coaches show, is brought to you by Foods Galore, preferred food supplier for Chickie and Pete's restaurants. Bradford White Water Heater, the official water heater of the Philadelphia Soul. Gino Steaks, the best cheesesteak in Philadelphia since 1966. Susquehanna Bank, the preferred banking partner of the Philadelphia Soul. And Hillis Adjustments, there are times in life when disaster may strike your home or business. Hillis is there for you.